Welcome to the webinar on Erasmus Plus Key Action 2 Strategic Partnerships in the Field of Adult Education and Vocational Education and Training. My name is Stephen and I am part of the Erasmus Plus team at the UK National Agency and together with my colleague Emmanuel we will provide assistance for this webinar. This pre-recorded webinar is aimed at applicants looking to apply for one of the activities under Erasmus Plus Key Action 2 Strategic Partnerships adult education or vocational education and training vet specifically strategic partnerships supporting exchange of good practices this webinar will briefly introduce you to key action to strategic partnerships and then focus primarily on how to complete the application form as well as providing you with some hints and tips to guide you through the application process Please note, this webinar is a joint webinar for adult education and VET, as the application form and overall process are very, very similar for both. However, when applying, you must carefully choose which field is most relevant to your project. The priorities of both activities are different, so it is very important to ensure that you apply under the field that is most relevant and most likely to be impacted by your project. The Erasmus Plus UK National Agency is a partnership between the British Council and Acorus UK and is responsible for managing strategic partnership projects in the UK, which is a decentralised action under Erasmus Plus Key Action 2. Strategic partnerships in the field of adult education and VET are managed at Acorus UK. Other types of projects under Key Action 2, such as Knowledge and Sector Skills Alliances, are managed centrally by the European Commission. In this webinar, we will not cover centralised actions, but you can find more information about those in part B of the programme guide, starting from page 133. Today's agenda covers a brief introduction to the Key Action 2 strategic partnerships, what funding is available, and some of the changes in the 2020 call. Firstly, we will talk you through some of the steps you need to take before you begin completing the e-application form and then we will go through the form together, completing certain parts and showing you how to utilise the distance calculator. Finally, after summarising some key points, we will run through the next steps following the submission of your application and remind you how to contact the UK National Agency for additional support in the run-up to the deadline. In this webinar, we will be referring to the Erasmus Plus Programme Guide version 1 of the 2020 call PDF version, which is available on the Erasmus Plus website. Key Action 2 is all about cooperation and collaboration between different organisations in the field of education, training and youth. It offers opportunities for organisations from different countries and different sectors to work together to share good practice and develop innovation in order to improve provision for learners. Activities supported under this Key Action are expected to bring positive and long-lasting effects on the participating organisations, policy systems in which such actions are framed, as well as on the organisations and persons directly or indirectly involved in the organised activities. This Key Action is expected to result in the development, transfer and or implementation of innovative practices at organisational, local, regional, national or European levels. Strategic partnerships are cooperation projects which allow organisations to work together to improve the quality of education and training provision, tackle common issues and share or develop innovative practices. One organisation applies for funding on behalf of the whole partnership and if the project is approved, this partner takes on the role of coordinator and has overall responsibility for managing the funding and reporting to the UK National Agency. Strategic partnerships are flexible in terms of size and in terms of the objectives and activities they deliver. There are two types of strategic partnership projects. Firstly, strategic partnership supporting innovation. Information about this type of project is covered in the separate webinar. In a nutshell, these projects are expected to develop substantial, innovative outputs and or undertake intensive dissemination and exploitation activities. And secondly, strategic partnerships supporting exchange of good practices, which is the focus of today's webinar. The main objective of strategic partnerships supporting exchange of good practices is to allow organisations to develop and reinforce networks, increase their capacity to operate at a transnational level and exchange ideas, practices and methods. Depending on project objectives, projects may also develop tangible results and will undertake dissemination, but project activities are expected to be proportionate to the aims, scale and scope of the project and the experience of project partners. 
All activities and outputs in exchange of good practices projects are co-financed using the project management and implementation budget, and no separate funding is to be available to develop intellectual outputs or multiplier events. You will need to select the type of strategic partnership you will develop in the application form, and therefore, it is important to carefully consider which type of project is best suited to your objectives and the experience and capacity of your partnership. When preparing your project and choosing your partners, it is important to carefully consider the experience and capacity of the potential partner organisations. The flexibility of Kiaction 2 allows organisations to deliver large-scale projects in addition to small-scale cooperation projects. The grant will vary depending on the size and scale of the project, and we will discuss this in greater detail when we look at the budget section of the application form. Strategic partnerships should address field-specific and or horizontal priorities that are relevant to the activity you apply for, as education or VET. The partnership can be made up of organisations working directly in the field of adult education and or VET, or in other fields of education, training or youth. However, in all cases, the priorities addressed by the project and the composition of the partnership must be relevant to the field of the application it is being submitted for. Projects focusing on added education can deliver a wide range of activities around topics, such as improving and extending the supply of high quality learning opportunities for adults by making available flexible learning offers adapted to their learning needs. Supporting the setting up and of and access to upskilling pathways for adults with low level skills, knowledge and competencies, allowing them to enhance their literacy, numeracy and digital competencies. Increasing learning demand and take up through effective outreach, guidance and motivation strategies which support the upskilling pathways by encouraging and supporting low skilled and or low qualified adults or through developing guidance as a service to ensure that adults have access to relevant learning throughout their lives. The examples provided here are just some of the ideas for you to consider. For a more detailed explanation of eligible activities, you should refer to the examples provided in Part B of the Programme Guide, in particular page 105 and page 296 within Annex 1. Always ensure that your project idea fits with the action priorities relevant to the field you are applying for. Where relevant, when devising your project activities, you may find it useful to consult the website of the electronic platform for adult learning in Europe, known as APALE. APALE is a multilingual open membership online community for anyone with a professional role in adult learning across Europe. It is set up around the sharing of content related to adult learning, including news, blog posts, resources, events and courses. Projects focusing on vocational education and training can deliver a wide range of activities around topics, such as developing partnerships that support the setup and implementation of an internationalisation strategy of VET learners and apprentices, developing partnerships aimed to promote work-based learning, for example, developing new training content, integrating periods of work-based learning, and working together to increase the quality of VET provision and adapt VET provision based on outcomes. Again, for more information, re please refer to Part B of the Erasmus Plus Programme Guide, page 104, and Annex 1 from page 295 for further examples. Always ensure that your project idea is consistent with the action priorities relevant to the field you are applying for. It is important to be aware of the programme objectives and the key action to field specific and horizontal priorities when developing your project. Information about the programme objectives can be found in Part A of the Erasmus Plus programme guide, but we will give a brief overview. Firstly, recognition and validation of skills and qualifications. For example, by using Europass or European Credit System for Vocational Education and Training, known as ECVET, to validate the learning outcomes from your project. Secondly, dissemination and exploitation of project results is a very important objective. You can refer to Annex 2 of the Programme Guide for useful guidance on this. All Key Action 2 projects are required to upload final project results onto the Erasmus Plus project results platform by the end of the project. You should also be aware of the open access requirements of the programme. Educational tools or materials produced with Erasmus Plus funding must be made freely available online in a digital format or under, a, uh, under an open license. Such materials are known as open educational resources. 
Multilingualism is another important objective, as it is one of the cornerstones of the European project. Innovation and exchange of good practices projects aiming to promote language skills can include, for example, teaching and assessment methods, development of pedagogical material, research, computer-assisted language learning, and entrepreneurial ventures using foreign languages. Funding for linguistic support can be provided when necessary to beneficiaries who organize long-term training and teaching activities for staff, youth workers, and learners. Equity and inclusion is also an important objective. For example, facilitating participation, where relevant and appropriate, of learners with fewer opportunities. Lastly, the protection and safety of participants must always be a priority in Erasmus Plus projects. This includes making suitable plans within your project to ensure that all participants are safe and supported. In addition to the programme objectives, in order to be funded, all strategic partnerships must address at least one horizontal action priority for strategic partnerships, and for that please see pages 100 to 102 of the programme guide and or at least one field specific priority relevant to the field the application is being submitted for either adult education or vet again please see pages 102 to 106 of the program guide if you select a horizontal priority and you are still required to demonstrate how to choose the chosen priority is relevant to the field you are applying for and how your project will make an impact in this field So for changes in the 2020 call, the main points to note are the PIC number has been replaced with an organisation ID or OID number. The participant portal has been replaced with the organisation registration system. Every year, the European Commission updates horizontal and field specific priorities for key action to strategic partnerships. Therefore, it is very important to refer to these priorities. Please refer to page 100 of the programme guide for horizontal priorities page 105 for adult education priorities, and page 104 for VET priorities. The European Commission has made an update to the exceptional costs for expensive travel under learning, teaching and training activities, which now includes the use of cleaner, lower carbon emission means of transport. So, how does the Key Action 2 strategic partnership work? One organisation applies to their country's national agency on behalf of the entire partnership. Projects can be of different sizes, but you must have a minimum of three partners from three different programme countries, including the applicant. You can find information of programme countries on page 22 of the programme guide. The lead or applicant organisation must always be from a programme country though organisations from partner countries can participate as partners if their participation brings an essential added value to the project. Projects can last between 12 and 36 months. You need to choose the duration of the project at application stage and this cannot be changed. You should also ensure that the project duration is realistic. Projects can be different sizes and the funding will reflect this. You need to build your project budget from a series of budget items based on the planned objectives, activities and outputs. The maximum possible budget is equivalent to €12,500 per month for the duration of the project. However, not every project will receive the maximum available budget. There is no formal requirement for match funding. However, the principle of co-financing applies. Please see page 256 of the programme guide for more information. This means that the grant is a contribution to the costs of delivering the project and may not cover all costs. Before completing your application, you and your partners will each need to have an organisation ID number or OID. The first step is to check if your organisation or partner already has an OID. If not, you will need to follow the two-step process. Firstly, you will need to register on EU Login, formerly known as ECAS. You need to register on EU Login to use any external European Commission tool. If you are already registered on EU Login, you can just use your existing login details. Otherwise, we have a video guide on our website which will talk you through how to register. The second step is to obtain an OID via the organisation registration system. 
The Organisation Registration System is a single entry point for the electronic administration of EU-funded projects related to Erasmus+. You will be prompted to provide information as well as upload documents related to your organisation. These documents are needed to prove the legal status and financial capacity of your organisation and therefore it is crucial that the information on these documents matches the information on the portal. Please ensure that all the information related to your organisation on the organisation registration system is correct and up to date. All partners are also required to submit signed partner mandates with the application. Partner mandates are now pre-populated as a part of your application form. These must be downloaded, checked and signed by hand by the legal representatives and then attached as an annex to the application form. Please be informed that organisations that have already participated in any Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps actions managed by a national agency, i.e. already have a participant identification code or PIC, have been assigned an OID automatically and do not have to register again. Please consult the guide for applicants and our website for more information. After developing your project idea and completing the OID registration process, you can move on to completing the application form. As well as this recorded webinar, please ensure you refer to the 2020 guide for applicants available on the How to Apply pages of the Erasmus Plus website. This guidance is produced by the UK National Agency to help you submit your application. As you complete your application, you should also refer to the quality award criteria against which your application will be assessed. The award criteria is outlined in the 2020 Programme Guide and Guide for Experts and are also mentioned in the Guide for Applicants. You should design your project with the uh, award criteria in mind. All these documents are available for download from our web website. The application form is a web form and must be submitted online by the applicant organisation before the deadline of Tuesday the 24th of March 2020 at 11am UK time. Please refer to the 2020 Guide for Applicants, which can be found on our website, and the European Commission's technical guidance for detailed information on the functionality and compatibility of the web form. You will be shown where to find it during the live demonstration of the web form. Web application forms are built on the latest standards of the web platform. They have successfully been tested on the following browsers. Google Chrome version 76, Microsoft Edge version 41, and Mozilla Firefox version 52.9.0. Please note that Microsoft Internet Explorer is no longer supported for the web forms. The web application forms are online applications and therefore need constant internet connection to work. It is not possible to work offline with the forms. It is recommended that you clear your web browser uh, cache and refresh the form before you start filling in the application form or continue working on a draft application. A printer and scanner will be needed in order to submit the application. In addition, you will need PDF reader software such as Adobe Reader to print, sign and scan the Declaration of Honor form which needs to be annexed to your application. This applies to both the adult education and VET application forms. It is important to note that when completing the application form you should not use multiple tabs or browser windows for your application as this may cause problems with the autosave functionality of the form and result in lost data in your application. So we will now go into the application form for the 2020 call and run through it with you. We will be using a mock application form but solely for illustrative purposes. So in order to access the application form, please log into the European Commission website as shown on screen using your existing EU login. Before we go through the application, we would like to just quickly show you where you can find all the technical guidance for detailed information on the functionality and compatibility of the web form.
Please ensure you select the right application and that you have the right application form open by checking information included on the top right bar under the Contacts tab. Once you open your application form, you will be able to access it under the My Applications tab on the home page. This means that your application form is saved automatically and you can work on it in stages. The link to the application web form can be found on the Apply for Adult Education or Vocational Education and Training Partnership Funding page of the Erasmus Plus website, depending on which field you are applying for. To begin a new application, you will need to select Opportunities and then select the key action you wish to apply to. Depending on which field you wish to apply for, you need to enter one of the subsections covered in this webinar, the key action and either adult education or vocational education and training. For adult education, you will need to select strategic partnerships for adult education KA204, or for VET, you will need to select strategic partnerships for VET KA202. In this webinar, we will be showing the key action to adult education application form for demonstration. So as we go through the application form, we'll uh, describe the information needed as well as providing hints and tips. Uh, we will put particular emphasis on the sections concerning the project activities and budget, showing how these link to each other, as well as advising you how, on how to complete them. Here you have to choose what the main objective and topic of your project is. Based on this choice, certain sections in the application form will be enabled or disabled. So there are two options here, uh, they are innovation or exchange of good practices. You should choose the project format which is most appropriate for delivering the planned project objectives and results. This should be discussed with your partners during the initial planning stages, taking into consideration objectives and activities of the project as well as the size, capacity and experience of the partnership. Although not a requirement, applicants or partnerships with less organisational capacity or less experience in European partnerships may wish to consider applying for strategic partnerships supporting the exchange of good practices as a first step. These projects allow organisations to gain experience of transnational cooperation and to deliver joint outcomes and results without the requirement to deliver substantial, high quality, innovative intellectual outputs. Here you have to input project title details in the respective tab. There is also the opportunity to type in a project acronym if you have one. Following this, you will need to input your start date and choose the duration of your project. This will automatically fill in the end date for you. The start date of the project must be between the 1st of September and 31st of December 2020. Please note that the latest possible end date for your project is the 31st of August 2023. The section National Agency of the Applicant Organisation requires you to choose the National Agency. For UK applicant organisations, this will always be UK01. You will also need to select the language you are using to complete the application form. For the applications made to the UK National Agency, this should always be in English. In this section, you are required to input all information about participating organisations, known as partnership. Please note the partnership must include organisations from at least three programme countries. If this criteria is not met, an error message will appear. The error message will notify you that the partnership is not valid for this type of activity. We will now show you how to add partners. Remember, when you enter your partner's OID numbers, the information will automatically populate from the information from the organisational registration system. Please also ensure that all OID numbers begin with a capital E.
So once the OID is checked and the information is added, you will then be able to edit the details of the organization. Grayed out areas are automatically pre-populated from the organization registration system. If the information on the organization registration system is correct and up to date, you will only have to fill in the rest of the mandatory fields, profile, associated persons, background and experience. In the profile section, you should choose type of organization. If you are in doubt, please consult the organization regarding its legal status. The next important part is to input information about the associated persons of your organization. Please note that the legal representative is the person that will be required to sign all compulsory documents for the application, such as a declaration of honor and partner mandates. We will now edit the information about the legal representative step by step. Please make sure you provide a valid email address for further communication. So once this section is completed, go back to the application applicant organization section and edit the contact person's information. You will also need to choose who will be the preferred contact person in regards to the application. Now moving to background and experience of the applicant organization, here you have to describe your organization, experience, field of work and main areas of expertise that are correlated to the project idea. As a final part, you must inform whether your organization participated in a European Union granted project in the three years preceding this application. There are several aspects to be taken into consideration in this section. Firstly, if you notice that any details of the organization are incorrect for you or your partner, they will need to be corrected in the organization registration system. Please note that information from this section will automatically be transferred and pre-filled to annexes such as the declaration of honor and partner mandates. Please also note that all participating organizations need to be identified in the application form. You will not be able to add partners at a later stage. If you include partners from a partner country, their participation will need to be well justified in terms of how they will bring an essential added value to the project. If this condition is not met, the project will not be considered for selection. It is also important to remember that a better quality application will be specific, naming staff members who will be involved in delivering the project and their skills. Please explain how your organization's previous experience of delivering projects or activities has built the skills and knowledge needed for the activities you propose in this application. Include details of the people your organization typically work with in terms of geographic location and any additional needs they may have if you feel that this information is relevant. In addition, clarify how the activities proposed in this application fit with other programs or activities you deliver. This will help the assessors understand how the proposal is innovative or complementary to other initiatives that your organization is already involved in. Please make sure it is clear from the description of each partner's work and expertise why they have been chosen to participate in your project. This applies to all partners, including less experienced organizations which may be involved, and particularly partners from other fields of education, training or youth. 
please type the correct email addresses of the contact person and legal representative. In all matters regarding application and selection, the National Agency will utilise these given email addresses for communication. It is recommended to have more than the minimum number of partners in the consortium to ensure your partnership can deliver the project in the event of the unexpected withdrawal of one of the partners. Overall, it is very important to choose appropriate partners. When looking for potential partners, you can seek recommendations from trusted partners or exploit known links and networks. You can also search for complementary organisations with experience of Erasmus Plus and its predecessor programmes via the Erasmus Plus Project Results platform or by using the partner finding tool on the Apale platform. You may wish to consider including partners with a mix of experience of European cooperation in your project, including, where appropriate, organisations that are new to Erasmus Plus and or European partnership working and will therefore gain particular benefit from their involvement. Within the application, you will need to provide a clear rationale for selecting your partners. Partners' experience and knowledge should contribute towards achievement of the project's objectives. If you include partners from other fields, you will need to provide a clear rationale in terms of how they will add value to a project, depending on the field you are applying for. Under the section Project Description, you will have to select the most relevant horizontal or sectoral priority for your project. Your main priority should either be a horizontal or a field-specific priority, in this case for adult education. After selecting the most relevant priority, you can then choose up to two additional priorities if your application has a cross-sectoral approach. If your application aims to address one of the horizontal priorities, you will still need to clearly demonstrate how the project will be relevant to and will impact your chosen field. Please ensure that you address priorities which are relevant to your selected field. Also, bear in mind that projects addressing the priority of inclusive education and training will be considered highly relevant. However, you will need to make sure that this is really addressed within your application. The selection of topics addressed by your project is also essential, as it will show the main thematic focus of your project. Please select up to three topics. Uh, this subsection is followed by a description of the project, where several aspects should be taken into consideration. Apart from describing the project and identifying main objectives, your application will be of a higher quality if you explain the rationale behind the project. You should demonstrate that your project is based on a genuine needs analysis that is relevant to the field. You must also ensure you make it clear how your project will address at least one horizontal or one field-specific action priority. If this is not clear, your application may not be funded. Make sure your results fit with the objectives of the project and that they are realistic and achievable. You should provide details of which partners will be involved in particular activities, which partners will be responsible for producing each result and when they will become available. Ensure that you know what is meant by results. Please see page 313 of the program guide for the European Commission's definition. Make sure that you explain how partners you selected will contribute towards achievement of the project objectives. Here, you should explain how associated partners, if involved, will contribute to the project delivery or support the dissemination and sustainability of your project. A key point is to check in the participants section is a definition of participants with fewer opportunities in the program guide. 
You will need to specify how many participants with fewer opportunities are going to be involved, what situations they are facing, and how you, as a partnership, will support them in order to achieve planned activities. You will need to select their situation from the drop-down menu. Please be clear about the idea and arrangements of your project to demonstrate clear feasibility of the project. In the preparation section, you should mention any preparatory activities that will take place before the start of your project, including practical arrangements prior to the submission of your application. Please note that the allocated funding cannot cover any costs incurred before the start date of your project. Therefore, costs associated with development of the application are ineligible for projects. The management section is split into three subsections addressing vital parts of the management aspects of the project. Funds for project management and implementation are provided to all strategic partnerships based on the number of participating organisations and the duration of the project. The purpose of these funds is to cover diverse expenses that any project may incur, such as planning, working on the project, communication between partners, small-scale project materials, virtual cooperation, local project activities, promotion, dissemination, and other similar activities not covered by other types of funding. Please note that a partnership may receive a maximum of €2,750 of project management and implementation costs per month. As you can see, this section of the budget is automatically calculated with unit costs based on a number of organisations involved in the project. It takes into consideration information provided in the section Participating Organisations. The narrative section requires you to explain which project activities will be carried out with the support of this grant. The subsection Transnational Project Meetings will require you to indicate all planned partner meetings during the project's life cycle. These costs are also calculated on the basis of unit costs. This component of the grant is a contribution to travel and subsistence costs for meetings hosted by participating organisations. To create meeting entries, you will need to click the Add button to create a line for each meeting. Costs are based on three distance bands, which are 0 to 99 kilometers, 100 to 1,999 kilometers, and over 2,000 kilometers. Distance bands are to be, to be calculated using the special European Commission distance calculator. Other methods of distance calculation, such as Google Maps, should not be used for this purpose. We will now enter information uh, about the first transnational project meeting with all the necessary attributes. You will need to provide a meeting name, the hosting organisation and their country, how many participants each organisation will send and the starting period. So for this meeting, the Finnish partner will be the host and will have four participants while the UK and Spanish organisations will both send two participants to attend. We will now switch to the distance calculator in order to calculate the correct distance band. Our test organisations are based in Birmingham, Helsinki and Barcelona. The distance should be calculated from the nearest town or city to you or your partner's registered address. It provides the distance in kilometres and it, it is this number that dictates which distance band you need to select. Once the distance is calculated, you will need to select the appropriate distance band in the application form to calculate the unit cost. This unit cost is a contribution to the cost of a return journey. Please ensure you use the correct distance band to avoid any issues with your budget. So as the Finnish partner is the host organisation, the distance band is the shortest one and is equal to 0 to 99 kilometres. The UK partner is based in Birmingham.
and the Spanish partner is based in Barcelona. As you can see, the distance from Birmingham to Helsinki is in a different distance band to the distance between Barcelona and Helsinki. After entering the information about the organizations, number of participants and the distance band, the unit cost and the total cost will automatically calculate. After you have pl planned all transnational project meetings, please check again that the details are correct. The final subsection is project management, where you have to focus on three main aspects, monitoring of the project activities, assessment of success of your project, and risk management of your project. You will need to indicate who will be providing monitoring, how it will be accomplished, if you are planning to involve an external project assessor, and how you will manage risks during the project cycle. In the implementation section, give as much detail as you can, explaining how the project activities will lead to the achievement of the project objectives and delivery of the planned results. Please describe cooperation arrangements within the partnership in order to deliver a successful project. Mention how you will coordinate activities within the partnership and how you will identify and manage any risks within your project. The best quality projects will use qualitative and quantitative indicators of achievement in order to assess whether, and to what extent, the project has achieved its objectives and results. This helps to demonstrate the impact of your project. Where possible, list the indicators and attach numerical targets to quantitative indicators and explain who will analyse these. Some examples of indicators could include measuring the skill level attained by participants to establish the impact of new methods, as well as measuring quality of the results produced. Methods to measure achievement may include surveys, web analytics, focus groups, interviews and similar methods. As the primary goal of exchange of good practices projects is to allow organizations to develop and reinforce networks and to increase their capacity to operate at transnational level, these types of projects are not expected to produce substantial intellectual outputs. Therefore, the intellectual output section within the application form will be disabled and the answer no will be automatically pre-filled under the question, do you plan to, in in to include intellectual outputs in your project? Exchange of good practices projects may produce tangible outputs and are expected to disseminate the results of their activities, but in a way that is proportional to the aim and scope of the project. These results and activities will be co-financed through the standard budget for project management and implementation. Multiplier events funding is not available for exchange of good practices projects, therefore this, this section is disabled and automatically pre-filled with the answer no. Learning, teaching and training activities can be included if they are clearly linked to the project objectives. The programme guide lists the eligible, eligible activity types and durations. Please see pages 109 to 110. If you include learning, teaching and training activities, you should clearly explain how they will support the achievement of your project objectives and whether you plan to use any EU tools such as ECVET, APALE, Europass or any national instruments to validate the learning outcomes of the participants. If your application is in the adult education field, you may want to consult the website of the Electronic Platform for Adult Learning in Europe, or APALE. Europass is another useful tool for recognising learning in both adult education and VET projects. If you are planning to include learning, teaching and training activities, choose Yes from the, down, from the drop down menu to generate and complete this part of the application. For demonstration purposes, we will show you how to create a learning, teaching and training activity. It will appear as activity C1 in the activity details field. By opening the details of the activity, you will be able to input information. 
As a reminder, the program guide contains information about the different types of activities that are possible for each field. You will then need to choose the appropriate field of activity. Our project relates to the adult education field, so we are expected to carry out activities only in the field of adult ed education. Next, select the activity type from the drop down menu. The activity type will define the minimum and maximum durations of the activity. For demonstration purposes, we will select long term teaching or training assignments. When choosing participating organisations, please be aware that learning, teaching and training activities should include participants from beneficiary organisations from at least two different countries. Therefore, we are choosing the other two members of the partnership. The duration of the activity is two months, as this is the minimum duration for a long-term activity. Please refer to the programme guide to specify eligible durations for all activities. Then choose the country of the venue. We will choose the Finnish partner, which is located in Helsinki. Please note that in addition to cities of the partner organisations, you may also choose a city that houses a seat of the European Institute to host a learning, teaching and training activity. Please refer to page 108 of the programme guide for more information. And finally, select the month when the activity will take place. Once this section is completed, you should move to Groups of Participants. Here you have to define the groups of participants who will require funding to participate in this activity. Within this detail section, start filling out the activity information. Here you have to input information about travel and individual support. Please bear in mind that participants in learning, teaching and training activities must have a link with the organisations participating as funded partners in the project. For example, they should be staff or learners of the participating organisations. Choose one of the participating organisations. In this demonstration, we will choose four, partic four participants and one accompanying person. Then move to the travel section to claim funds for travel to and from the activity. Please note that travel funds are a contribution to the travel costs of participants, including accompanying persons, from their place of origin to the venue of their activity and the return journey. You will also have to use the distance calculator for this, but please note that the form uses different bands to those of the transnational project meetings. The duration of activities should exclude travel days. However, if participants will be travelling a long distance for short-term activities, it is possible to request individual support for up to two travel days, one on either side of the activity. If applicable, an extra two days can be added to the duration of the activity in the budget section. Please provide a clear explanation to justify the reasons behind doing so in the description box. Extra travel days cannot be added for long-term activities. Our demonstration activity will take place in Finland. Participants will travel from Birmingham to Helsinki, therefore we must use the correct distance band. We will now select the distance band, input the total amount of participants and the costs for travel will automatically be calculated. Please note that exceptional costs for expensive travel will only apply in exceptional cases, where the normal unit cost calculated will not cover at least 70% of the expected travel costs for duly justified reasons. Examples might include where participants need to travel from very remote or distant areas, far from transport hubs. Any requests for exceptional costs will need to be clearly justified, including evidence of the expected costs in order to be approved. Where such costs are justified, you can request up to 80% of the expected eligible costs. A point to note is that under the 2020 call, this budget now allows to include the use of cleaner, lower carbon emission means of transport. 
This means that if the cost of travel is more expensive based on these grounds, you are entitled to claim these costs. Now moving to individual support. You will see how the budget is calculated once you input the number of participants and the duration of activity. Please note that the activity duration for accompanying persons is displayed in days. Once this is done, you can request linguistic support for your participants. By inputting the same number of participants, it will calculate the amount eligible for linguistic support. In order to qualify for linguistic support, your activity should have a minimum duration of two months. Linguistic support can be offered to participants to improve their knowledge of the language of the host country in order to support their active participation. Any costs requested under this budget heading must be clearly justified within the body of the application form. The application will not allow you to request linguistic support if you do not have a learning, teaching and training activity that meets the minimum duration. Please note that we demonstrated steps for only one organisation that we selected for participation. The same steps apply for all organisations that will participate in the activity. Therefore, you will have to calculate the same for, for all the other organisations. This section summarises all the activities planned during the project once you have inputted them under the different sections of your application. Under this section, special costs are split into two subheadings, special needs support and exceptional costs. Exceptional costs relate exclusively to subcontracting or the purchase of goods or services that cannot be delivered or provided by the organisations participating in the project, for duly justified reasons. Any costs requested under this heading must be explicitly justified within the application form. Where such costs are justified, you can request up to 75% of the expected costs, up to a maximum total of €50,000 per project. For example, if you expect the total costs of, for subcontracting of external evaluation of the project to be €1,000, you can request up to 75% of the planned costs, meaning €750. Euros. Visa costs are not considered eligible as exceptional costs under Key Action 2. Any visa costs will need to be co-financed using the project management and implementation budget. Exceptional costs relate exclusively to costs related to subcontracting or the purchase of goods or services that the partnership can't produce or provide for themselves. In respect to the special needs support and exceptional costs description, the application form allows you to write up to 5,000 characters, so please ensure that any requests under these budget headings are clearly described and justified in the application form. The special needs support budget heading is only applicable if you plan to involve participants with special needs in your project, resulting in additional costs. This component of the grant is based on an estimate of the actual costs relating specifically to the needs of participants with disabilities. In the budget section, you will need to identify the activities that the requested costs relate to. The participation of individuals with special needs must be justified in the main body of the application form. You can claim up to 100% of real costs incurred for special needs support. As a reminder, under Erasmus+, Plus, a person with special needs is defined as a potential participant whose physical, mental or health related situation is such that their participation in the project would not be possible without extra financial support. This section focuses on three areas of the project, impact, dissemination and the use of project results and sustainability. Please remember that impact is a very important element in Erasmus Plus projects, and you must therefore show the importance of your proposal on your target groups and beyond, as well as at local, regional, national and European level. Think about the added value of realising this project on a European level, rather than with national partners, and explain this in this section. Plan for dissemination dissemination activities to take part throughout your project lifecycle, not just at the end. Demonstrate that dissemination will reach and engage all of your partners, stakeholders and wider network. Ensure it is clear that you 
that your plans for sharing the results of your project do not contain disproportionate limitations to free access. If you do intend to introduce any limitations, you will need to explain this in this section, bearing in mind the program requirements for open access. Please refer to Annex 2 of the Program Guide, which gives practical guidance on dissemination of your project. The Budget Summary is another section, automatically populated by filling in other sections of the application. Completing the budget correctly is important, as it will not only affect the funding you may receive for your project, but also the quality assessment of your application. It is important to ensure that your budget is proportionate to your project and in line with the programme budget rules. The maximum total grant available for any adult education or VET strategic partnership equates to €12,500 per month, multiplied by the project duration in months. However, not all projects will receive the maximum grant. The budget for strategic partnerships is intended to be a contribution to the costs of delivering the project and may not cover all costs. The budget consists of a number of different budget items, some of which are calculated on a unit cost basis and some of which are calculated based on estimated actual costs. Some budget items, such as intellectual outputs and multiplier events, are only applicable for innovation projects. Other budget items, such as exceptional costs and learning, teaching and training activities, may be applicable for any type of project, but must be strongly rationalised within the application form in order to be approved. You must refer to the detailed budget guidance on pages 116 to 123 of the 2020 Programme Guide. This guidance outlines definitions of what is considered eligible for funding under each budget heading and any conditions that apply in addition to explaining how the budget item is calculated. You should design your project around the activities and outputs you need to deliver in order to achieve the planned project objectives. The project summary will be used by the European Commission and the National Agency in their publications and will feed into the Erasmus Plus project results platform. Therefore, it should be written with this in mind. It should be written in clear English, avoiding any technical or sector-specific jargon to ensure that it can be understood by the general public. Please provide a concise summary of the key aspects of your project, including the rationale for the project, the composition of the partnership, key objectives, activities and outputs, and how you will realise planned impacts and ensure future sustainability. The compulsory annexes which you need to attach to your application before submission are the Declaration of Honour, which must be signed by hand by the organisation's legal representative and include the date and place where the document was signed, and the scanned partner mandates signed by hand by both parties. Templates for the Declaration of Honour and partner mandates can be downloaded directly from the form. All documents requiring signatures must include an original signature and then be scanned and attached to the application. Electronic or digital signatures are not accepted. If you fail to attach any of these documents, unfortunately your project application will be ineligible. Once the documents are uploaded correctly, this section will be automatically validated. Once you have attached the compulsory annexes, you can attach other relevant documents, for example a needs analysis and a sample work programme. We advise you to keep it concise, as we expect all the information that is key to the quality and content of your project to be included within the main body of the application form. The sharing function can be utilised to support beneficiaries, allowing either viewing or editing access to individuals from partner organisations. It is worth noting the following. Only individuals listed as contact person or legal representative can be involved in the sharing function. Only one individual can access the form at any one time. An automated email will be sent to the partner's contact person once the applicant chooses to share the form's access. The partner's contact person will not have access to the submit button and therefore only the applicant can submit the application form. Finally, here are a few hints and tips on the submission procedure. Proofread as you go and after completing the application. 
you will automatically be taken to any sections that are incorrect or have been missed. Ensure you utilize the European Commission's technical guidance on the web forms. Ensure all the required annexes are attached and have been hand signed where necessary. Please read the data protection notice carefully. Save a PDF version of your application form to your computer in case of any submission issues. Remember that the deadline mentioned in the form is Brussels time, as there is a time difference. So the form must be submitted online by 11 a.m. UK time on Tuesday, the 24th of March, 2020. Please complete and submit your application in good time in case of any expected technical difficulties. Please do not leave it to the last minute. So before we fin finish today's webinar, we would just like to recap on some of the requirements and key points you need to be aware of. Once we have received your application, we will check its eligibility. You must ensure your application meets the eligibility requirements and that you attach all the required annexes to your application and submit it by the deadline. Unfortunately, if you do not meet the eligibility requirements, your application will be made ineligible and you will not go forward for assessment. Please make sure you read the programme guide and the National Agency Guide for Applicants carefully and are clear about the requirements before submitting your application. Your organisation and all your partners will need to be validated by the National Agency of the country where they are based in order to take part in the project. Validation is a separate process which runs in parallel to the application assessment process. Although your organisation must be validated in order to be funded, your organisation being validated does not automatically imply a successful outcome for your application. During the validation process, we will check whether all the information you put into the organisation registration system is complete and correct. We will check whether the required legal and financial forms have been uploaded, along with the required supporting documents. Please refer to the guide for applicants for further guidance on which supporting documents you need to upload to support the validation process. These will vary slightly depending on your organisation type and the value of the grant requested. Organisations that are not validated will not be able to take part in Erasmus Plus projects. You should therefore ensure that your organisation and your partners have correctly updated the organisation registration system and uploaded all the required supporting documents in good time. Delays can impact on the assessment and contracting processes and may ultimately result in any offer of funding being withdrawn. The absolute maximum budget for projects are €450,000 for a 36-month project. However, not all projects will request or receive the maximum available budget. You must design your budget around the partnership, objectives, activities and results of your project, ensuring that you comply with the budget rules. The Erasmus Plus grant is intended as a contribution to the costs of delivering the project and may not cover all costs. Please note that some parts of the budget may be reduced during assessment stage. Most budget items are calculated based on unit costs. For example, this can be the number of participants for a certain duration or set costs per distance travelled. Budget headings based on unit costs are project management and implementation, transnational project meetings, intellectual outputs and multiplier events. Costs under learning, teaching and training activities, travel, individ individual support and linguistic support are also based on unit costs. Some budget items are based on an estimate of the likely real costs. These are specialty support and exceptional costs, as well as exceptional costs for expensive travel costs under learning, teaching and training activities. These budget headings require detailed justification within the application form and you are entitled to claim a percentage of the estimated likely costs depending on the budget heading. You should refer to Part B of the Programme Guide and the Guide for Applicants for detailed information on the rules and requirements for each budget item. Finally, and most importantly, your budget should be proportionate to your planned activities and demonstrate reasonable value for money. Organisations must ensure that Erasmus Plus funding is used to deliver the activities that are set out in their application. If you or any of your partners are receiving other funding from other sources to deliver the same or similar activities, including from other EU funding 
programs, you must disclose this in the relevant section of the application form and ensure that there is no overlap or risk of double funding. Each project is only entitled to receive one grant. Identical or very similar applications submitted either by the same applicant or partners or by a different applicant or partners will be subject to a specific assessment and may all be rejected. As a reminder, the following documents must be annexed to the application form. The Declaration of Honour signed by the organisation's legal representative with the date and where the document was signed. The Partner Mandate signed by both parties and with information identical to the information about the partners in the application form. And please note that the attachment of the project timetable is optional but recommended. We recommend that you scan different documents together into a single file. If, after checking that the annexes are within the size and file format limits, you are still experiencing problems with attaching annexes, you can email them to erasmusplus at ecorus.com, state the application code as well as your organisation's details and the project's name, but please only do this as an exception and ensure you have followed all the available guidance first. If you are considering reapplying in 2020, please bear in mind bearing mind the following. Do not resubmit exactly the same application form from a previous call year without making any changes. Do make sure you take on board the feedback from the assessors and any budget assessment comments and address them. Also, please bear in mind that the application assessment process is competitive and only the highest scoring applications may be funded. Each year the number of applications received varies, so no two rounds are the same. The best way to ensure success is to submit a high quality application. So this slide shows an overview of the application process. Beginning with the web form, the deadline for the submission of all applications is Tuesday the 24th of March 2020 at 11 a.m. UK time. The key documents that need to be uploaded to the organization registration system to support validation include the legal entity form or LEF, financial identification form or FIF and recent account information to demonstrate financial activity. Please read the guide for applicants for further information. A reminder to familiarise yourself with the budget rules and ensure that your budget request is compliant and proportionate to your project. Ensure you carefully read all the up-to-date European Commission documents for the 2020 call as well as the National Agency's 2020 call guide for applicants. Keep answers clear and concise and make sure all the questions are answered. Do not assume that anything is obvious and make good use of the 5,000 character limits in the text box. Make sure you refer to the award criteria which your, your application will be assessed against as you complete the application. And finally, a reminder of the annexes you will need to attach to the application. The Declaration of Honour, signed by the legal representative and the signed partner mandates. If there are any technical issues preventing the form from being submitted, it will say error under status. If this happens and you are unable to submit the form, you should follow the alternative submission procedure, as described in the guide for applicants. In this case, you can still submit your application by sending it to us via email within two hours of the official deadline. However, the UK National Agency will only accept alternative submissions if the error message is recorded under status in the submission summary section of the web form with a timestamp on or prior to the deadline. So to quickly summarise the key points as on screen, please refer to the European Commission documents and technical guidance and the UK National Agency guidance. Please make sure your project application is clear concise and all the questions are answered. Ensure the budget requested is correct and well justified. Have somebody proofread your application and most importantly please don't leave your application to the last minute. So to conclude I would like to remind you of, of the support the UK National Agency will be offering in the run-up to the deadline on the 24th of March in addition to webinars. A live Q&A webinar will be taking place on 19th of February. You can register via the, Euro, the Erasmus Plus website, but bear in mind that places are limited. 
A detailed guide for applicants on how to fill out the application form is available on our website. If you have not done so already, please sign up to our newsletter to keep up to date with key information about the call and other developments in Erasmus+. Plus. We also have a helpline where our team is available to answer your questions about key action to adult education or vet inquiries. We are here to help. So thank you for listening to this pre-recorded webinar. If you have any further questions, please contact us via the email address or the number on screen. The team is available Monday to Thursday from 9am to 5.30pm and on Friday from 9am to 5pm in order to help you with any queries. We wish you all the best with your application.